Welcome to this week's edition of the Commissioner's Corner. We're taking a little detour this week and we're going to go away from the student athletes and bring on our newest head coach in the WCHA, Coach Joel Johnson, the head coach of the St. Thomas Tommies and also our Team USA Women's National Team. Good morning, Coach. How are you? I'm doing great, Jan. Thanks for having me. I am so excited about this conversation. Just so the viewers know, I usually give our student athletes a little heads up about what I might ask him. I didn't do that for coach. So we're going to go right at it and see how he responds. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. So you've been coaching with USA Hockey for years at a number of different levels until being named women's team national coach uh, in April. I'm just really curious. Was that something, was being a part of USA Hockey something that you always wanted to do? You know, it was never one of those things, you know, early on that I thought much about. And then as I was back uh, in early 2000s, late 99, early 2000, there was an opportunity to work a development camp coach, you know, out in Lake Placid with the girls uh, USA development program. And, and I said, yeah, and, uh, and I've been involved, I think, almost every year since. Um, as, as things grow, you start to understand the, the whole process and, and the different teams and the different national team experience options there are. And so the more familiar that I became, the more I kind of, you know, you question, hey, wouldn't that be a great opportunity? But as I've told people before, I think that it's, it's never something that I said, that's what I want to do. It's just always been an honor and a privilege whenever I've been asked to be a part of things, whether that's a development camp coach, an assistant coach, a skills coach or ultimately a head coach at, at any of the national team levels. And so I think that's what's allowed me to stay uh, on track and not worry if I get an opportunity or don't, but certainly it's uh, it's the privilege of a lifetime uh, in the sport of women's hockey to be named a head national team coach, and I'm really enjoying it. So it's been an interesting few months. I mean, certainly one of the coolest things that we've been seeing is the MyY tour and the in playing all over the U.S., a couple games in Canada. And so from your perspective, my perspective, I'm curious about, the fans. I'm curious about the atmosphere. I'm curious about how much you've seen the growth of women's hockey for over the last, you know, 20 plus years that you've been a part of, of USA hockey. It seemed like for, for the, for those of us paying attention from afar, when you were in Pennsylvania, it was sold out. When you were in Canada, it was sold out, you know, was going to be a big crowd in, in St. Paul. Like what has that been like for you to witness sort of just the evolution? Well, there's, there's two things. One, it's such a fun environment to play in front of a packed building, even if you're on the road. Uh, and that's, that's traditionally how Canada is, has always been. And it's really nice to see the U S starting to climb up and, and uh, you know, hosting different events and, and show, showcasing the sport. And so, especially with the pandemic over the last 18 months to be able to play in front of fans was, was pretty fun for our players as we're preparing for the Olympics, you know, knowing that the fans are probably a doubt, as to their their attendance in, in Beijing. And so it's really been something to see. The other part of it that's really, I think, unique is, is you're starting to see engagement uh, with individual players on our on our US uh, national team and 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 you know young fans holding up signs asking for a stick or a puck. Um, certainly things that you see at other levels of professional sports. And now uh, it's really exciting that uh, that women's hockey is is kind of on the same track and you're starting to see it on a day by day basis when we host these events and so disappointed that this last game was not able to to be played because I think they were expecting potentially a record crowd 10 12,000 or something at, at the XL Center and and maybe even more so uh, bummer but uh, but hopefully we'll we'll find another opportunity to play in front uh, of our fans. Do you feel like your current national team members understand and, and appreciate both the responsibility that they have and the opportunity that they have. I'd say they appreciate it and they live the life more than any pro athlete I've ever, I've ever met. Uh, not only do these players perform and train every day to, to get ready for these games, but they participate in promotional activities. They're signing autographs. They're going out and, and speaking and giving clinic or putting on clinics in the community when we're in these various locations. And that's something that you just don't see across uh, many other uh, pro athletes. And, and so it's really impressive. So not only do they engage it in, in, in the opportunity to, to be a part of the community, um, but they, they live it every day. And, and so it's sometimes I think it's a little bit uh, too much to ask, mm -hmm. uh, but man, they do it well because they know how important it is. Um, as, as many people said, you, you can't see what, you know, you can't be what you can't see. And so they know that it's important to get out there and, and uh, give young fans something to look at. Yeah, they're incredible ambassadors. And, and I share your disappointment in not being able to play in the Twin Cities, obviously, it was, you know, the state of hockey is the state of hockey for a reason. And I think the turnout, especially amongst, 
youth girls teams was going to be phenomenal. And, and for someone like me who really just wants to continue to push the, the game and the growth and the opportunity, like seeing that and feeling that would have been so special for so many. Um, but we hope that, you know, it's that you just get back to training and get back to being ready to go for Beijing, because that's ultimately what's the most important Let's switch gears a little. So obviously yeah. we've talked a little Team USA, but we, as I mentioned at the top, new head coach at the University of St. Thomas, newest member of the WCHA after joining us uh, here this summer. So give us all a little look at your schedule, trying to do both things. What's it been like since uh, since April? <laughs> it's been chaotic. You know, a- April and May and June and into July, it was mostly focused on St. Thomas and it, so it allowed us to to, to put together a great staff and, and kind of get used to some different things and get to know some of the players over the summer. The month of August, I was really heavy with Team USA because we were at our world championships. And then into September and, and uh, early parts of October was, was kind of back with St. Thomas uh, mostly. Um, October, November, and December have been a mix. You know, I typically get up in the morning and, and drive up to Blaine where our, our national team has residency training and and then sometime mid afternoon, uh, grab a quick bite to eat and, and try, try to get down to St. Thomas if I'm able to and, um, you know, and, and get to practice in the afternoon there. Um, it, it's been it's been challenging. It's been rewarding. It's been all the above. Um, haven't been able to be at everything related to to our, our St. Thomas program, missing some practices and games. Um, but that that the staff that uh, I mentioned that we were able to put together with Bethany Browsen and Marty Sturdich and Allie Borgstrom, you know, that they, uh, they knew what, what was going to happen. And um, that was in part the way that we shaped our staff, knowing that these people are just as gifted as anybody in running a program. And so, you know, Bethany as the acting head coach, uh, Marty brings a lot of experience at St. Thomas having been there and also, you know, as a college hockey icon, we, we tease Marty quite a bit about <laughs> which Hall of Fame he's getting inducted to next. And, and uh, Allie being a former player, you know, an All-American, it, it just is the perfect staff um, that, that we're able to kind of weather the storm and, and live, live through the challenges together. But I certainly give credit to them because without them, uh, none of this would be possible. Yeah, you spoke right into my next question. I, I anticipated that you would mention Bethany and Marty specifically. And so I'm curious, you know, when you got hired at St. Thomas and had a chance to, you know, build your staff a little bit, knowing likely the commitments of Team USA that were coming, you know, what makes Marty and Bethany the fit? What makes them the right folks to do the job that they're doing? Well, you know, Bethany is somebody I've worked with. I had the privilege to coach. Uh, she has playing experience in the WCHA. She has leadership experience as a two-year captain, won national championships, um, and, and has been an incredible coach, um, you know, recently at Minnesota. And so that was a no-brainer for me to, to gauge her interest, to see if she would be, you know, interested in, in, in being a part of things. And, uh, and then I, you know, I knew Marty a little bit, but then spending a little bit of time over the summer getting to know him and, and, you know, the, the job itself, just like the head, head coaching position is it's a, it's a pretty prestigious place. And so there's a lot of interest, but at the end of the day, it just felt so obvious uh, that Bethany with all that she brings, not only as an on ice um, coach, but as a relational coach and, and a mentor for, for so many people in, in the world of, of hockey, especially in this area, you know, and then Marty with his with his background and experience at St. Thomas and also as a player, it just was perfect. You know, like I said, Bethany is our acting head coach and um, I trust her implicitly. Uh, that's the thing that we have as a staff. And I mentioned that in the summer, knowing I'd be gone is we, we have to have a great foundation of trust and, and accountability. And that's what we have. And we also laugh and have a good time and make fun of each other, which is, you know, uh, I'm usually on the receiving end of most of it, but, but it's, uh, it's a great staff. And, and there's no question that the, when you ask people around the world of women's hockey, um, nobody can speak anything but, but high, highly of Bethany and Marty. Yeah, I love that Bethany's getting that opportunity. I mean, I think she's earned it. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thankful to you for giving her that chance because I think it's it's going to allow her to step into her own space as well. So the transition for St. Thomas, what was it like putting this first roster together? Like what, you know, you obviously there was a roster, you know, previous that was competing at the D3 level very successfully at the division three level. You get the job, you kind of have the summer to maybe figure out the transfer portal, transfer portal. Like what was that like getting this roster together? Yeah, you know, the ironic part is because of how late the the job was posted and and the hire was that the roster was already there. It was made up of 
of a, a majority of players who had been there, um, but also eight or nine, you know, new players that um, the former coaching staff, including Marty, um, having been on staff, had put together. So there wasn't a lot of additions. You know, there was people that called and wanted to know about transferring. And, um, you know, I was pretty adamant that I didn't want to make a lot of changes this first, you know, into this first season because I need, I needed to get to know who, who was yeah. on the roster and figure that out. And so, uh, so that was really exciting to, to get there and get to know the players. And, and now, you know, we've kind of seen it with the way that women's hockey recruits, we've seen it as a couple of year process of kind of establishing our foothold in the recruiting circles. Um, but, you know, Minnesota being such a incredible community for, for girls hockey, it, it's, it, it shouldn't take, in our opinion, it shouldn't take long uh, for us to, to kind of climb the ladder and, mm-hmm. and, and on the recruiting side, because St. Thomas is such a high profile institution, even before they were going to division one athletic status, you know, you, you've, you've got people, former players of mine that reached out and said, congratulations and were very candid and said, Hey, if I could have gone to St. Thomas, I would have, you know, uh, just because it's such a well-respected institution uh, academically, uh, the networking that you get when you go to a place like St. Thomas in the local areas is, is unbelievable. And so now you add on top of that, the division one athletic experience and, and it's a, it's a pretty unique opportunity for, for a lot of people. It's funny because I swear I didn't give you these questions. You're just like straight. You're just ahead of me the whole time right now. So you obviously you've been in the league for a long time. So you, you know what it takes. You were successful at Minnesota as as successful as you can be when you win national championships. What is it going to take for St. Thomas to get into that, to that top, you know, top realm of our league? Yeah. I think the hardest part is knowing that when you have, when you say, well, we're going to try to climb, you know, climb the ladder in the standings, who are you going to take over? You know, like <laughs> yeah. everybody is so good. So, so when you say that you have to be realistic and say, okay, it's going to take some time. Um, but I think if you look at the history of the league, there's been some, there's been fluidity, there's been movement. And I know some people would say, well, there's always been so-and-so at the top, but if you go back over the last 20 years, there's actually been more movement than people realize. And, and so that's what we're hoping to do is gain a foothold. It's, it's obviously about, the X's and O's on the ice, but you also really have to just make sure that you're recruiting the right kind of people. And there's just such a, there's such a player depth in this area that I feel like, you know, it's going to take some time. Um, but we feel like if we can, if we can try to main get into the top half of our league over the course of three to four or five years, once you're in the top half of the WCHA, you're in the national national rankings. You, you just are, you are by, by nature of it being such a great conference. And so, we feel like it, that's where we want to get to. And I think if you see the, the trends over the course of the last 20 years or whatever it's been, the teams that are in the top half typically have an opportunity to make that national tournament. For sure. And with the, with the addition of three more teams, right. And going to a bracket of 11, you know, I've said to a lot of people, I, I hope that that is seen as a huge win for our league because we are already feel like our top two or three should be in that conversation all the time. And now you add three more opportunities and that hopefully adds another opportunity for someone in our league. So it's exciting. January 23rd, the Tommies are part of Hockey Day, Minnesota, get to play outdoors, something that, again, you've been a part of previously. How do you help, how will you help prepare them? I feel like the student athletes always, it's such an opportunity. It's such an experience. They grow up playing pond hockey and grow up playing outdoors, but to now do that in a, you know, real collegiate game setting. Um, what, what do you think the experience will be like? How do you help them get ready? I think the two things that come to mind, you have to remind them that it's totally unpredictable when you play outdoors. Um, and, and there's going to, the ice conditions are what they are and the temperature is what it is. And sometimes the, you know, things happen and you can't always control and, and you can't always be as predictable. So you have to prepare them for that. Um, but also I think the best way to, to have success in those opportunities is to really encourage them to enjoy the, the experience. Uh, I think that, that, that it allows them to be okay with mistakes or the unpredictability, um, but to also look around and say, hey, what a neat, what a privilege, what a neat thing this is to be able to, to be a part of. And so I know for both teams, uh, you know, it, it, it'll be St. Thomas the first time, you know, in, in this event, but I know Mankato has, has done it before and, and I've certainly been a part of it. And, you know, a lot of these gr- girls that are local have grown up playing in some outdoor high school games and some different experiences. So I think everybody's just really excited for it and, and we'll do our best to try to prepare for the, uh, for the unknown. 
Yeah, right. I, I've joked. Some people are like, oh, it'll be freezing. It hasn't been freezing yet in the Twin Cities. So it could be 40. Who knows, right? <laughs> <laughs> so from your perspective, highlights of the first half for you so far? Either either Team USA, St. Thomas, all of the above. What have been the highlights so far? Yeah, you know, the, the highlights for me have been the opportunities to get to know the players, uh, and I haven't even been able to as much as I normally would. That's been uh, the challenge is, is not being around as much. But the little glimpses where, whether it's a road trip or, or just, a, you know, a conversation at practice uh, for either team, the opportunity to get to know the players, uh, you know, is, is why you get involved in coaching. And certainly other highlights, you know, your first, uh, the first win that we had, and, and then we, we were able to get a sweep on the road and, and enjoy a road trip that way. So there's been some highlights on the, on the competitive side, but I would say the biggest highlight that I have, in particular with St. Thomas, and I've shared this with our team, is, is when I, when I just watch how, how much they care and how much they're excited and how much they're relishing this opportunity. You know, there's a player, um, I think it was at our, one of our first pregame skates of the year who was a little bit quiet and, and almost looked like she had a tear in her eye. And I, I just asked her, I said, Hey, is everything okay? And she said, I just can't believe we get to do this, you know? And, and, you know, when you see that kind of emotion, that kind of a joy and enthusiasm, it reminds you of how special this opportunity is for all these players. Yeah, goes right back to that why, right? Why we're doing yeah. this, why you're putting in the efforts that you're putting in. And I feel the same way every time I watch your team compete because that's what they do. They compete and, you know, they don't, the expectations are whatever they are and that's fine. They go out, they play hard. They seem to really enjoy that. And I know they get a lot of that from you uh, as their leader, but it's been, you know, a huge addition to our league and a huge credit to all of you who are leading them through this process and excited to see where they come. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask one last question. <laughs> Got it. <clears throat> What's your favorite holiday tradition? What are you most looking forward to right now around the holidays? You know, um, <clears throat> boy, that's good. Somebody asked me the other day, what, what do you want for Christmas? And I said, I'd like a nap. <laughs> um, you know, I think that's the best part for me is to relax and, and just to spend time with people you love. And, you know, for us, whether it could be playing board games or, you know, hanging out as a family or watching a, you know, a Christmas movie, uh, just, just the, the opportunity to kind of un, unplug and, and just spend time. And, you know, I've told team, both of the teams that I coach, Hey, you know, have a great Christmas and have a great holiday season. Try not to think about hockey. Um, and if you do, hopefully it's an outdoor going to the rink and, and playing with friends from, from high school or whatever it is. So I just think that hockey is such a unique sport and that we get a, this little two week break almost. And, um, and I, I know myself, there's some recruiting, there's some different pieces to it, but my favorite tradition is to just spend time with family and those that I love. I love it. Thanks, Joel, so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having a, a St. Thomas and, and a coach and everything. I hope I hope I didn't, uh, didn't screw up too bad on the questions. You nailed it, as you always do. One of the most well-spoken coaches that I know. I really appreciate that. So there's no action in the WCHA this week as, we, as, we should, as it should be with Christmas being this weekend. So from all of us at the WCHA, we just want to wish everyone a very safe and healthy and festive holiday season. And we'll see you next week for another edition.